Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever it might be for you. Uh, this is the day after Christmas, November 26th. A couple of us are out uh, bright and early for me, I guess, whatever that is. Uh, this is 12.9.1 because we tossed a couple trio sessions um, on at the end of the year to see if we can't get ourselves closer to the low hundreds. Uh, just because it would be fun. As always, these meetings are recorded for those people that were unable to attend in person, which looks like it's going to be quite a bit of, quite a few people this time around. Um, so today is going to also get cut short because I've got a thing I have to go run to, so which is about 9:45 for me. So we got 45 minutes and a little bit less than that. So let's go ahead and jump straight into the bugs. Um, there are a few feature requests that came in. Uh, last week from Fire Giant team, I'd like to skip those and come back to them, just like I'd like to skip Heathbug because he's not here. Does that sound reasonable to you, Bob? Uh, sure. Because these, I think, we should talk about in the new year, kind of thing. Okay. All right. DevM should custom action should time out. Right. We talked about this on a different bug. How we're not continuing and stuff like this. Well, we've, uh, we've gotten a couple of reports of of DevM setup hanging, in fact, really hanging for uh, VS 2013. And though it's, you know, presumably a bug in, in Visual Studio, GASP, um, it's no good for for Wix, at least, and things that use the Wix VS authoring to, uh, uh, to suffer from. So the simplest thing is just to have a timeout and truthfully, I'm okay with just saying, you know, uh, it, well, like I put in here, it's like if, if we treat it as a failure, then we would roll back. Um, it would be kind of annoying for someone who does not have their, their packages um, authored like this. You know, if you don't, if you don't have your Visual Studio integration factored out into a separate package like Votive is, then you're looking at, you know, failing your failing your install. I don't like that. Um, I don't know that I want to go to the extent of making it configurable, however. Well, I don't know what we need to design this, but it does seem like something we should protect ourselves against and protect people against since it looks like DevInf does have the ability to hang. So I do say we could take this in 3X and go from there. Yep. All right. That works. Works for me. Cool. So I wanted to skip this next one. And I think we're, yeah, we're back in the five years ago. All right. As kind of expected since it's, I would expect it to be a quiet week. Um, text on the exit dialog needs to be separate from checkbox. Uh, this is a yeah. very contentious thing to do. Um, yeah, and I think where I ended up in the five years ago discussion is um, the, the right fix for this really is to give the author more control over where over over the the bitmap used in the dialogue first of all and second of all or alternately depending on you know again how you want to design it um, uh, give control over where the the checkbox is located um, I've seen for example and I'm gonna forget the names and it doesn't matter I've seen products that that move that checkbox at, at, the final page down to the lower yeah, right. That's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, and and you know, obviously there's localization impact and blah blah blah. But for those people doing it, it works. So um, I suspect that we already have a lot of this right now with the new localization feature. Um, I suspect this really is uh, not the the coding work that I'd originally anticipated, but maybe some doc work to show how you can use the, the new look stuff to um, move stuff around, resize the, the bitmap, stuff like that. So 3x doc bug? That's where I lean today. I'm talking about that. Use this as an example, as one of the many examples of how to configure the controls yourself. Right, right. I'm fine with that. Be good to capture that down here, but yes. Yeah. All right. Harvest option needs leave goods in place. 
No, it doesn't. Yeah, I know. We have different ways of doing this now. Like, use the star good and all that kind of good stuff. So, yeah. No. Not anymore. Integrate with VS 2008 isolated. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, <clears throat> um, well, the VS 2008 portion is uh, a bit late. Um, but integrating with the isolated shell is not a horrible idea. Um, I, I have actually no idea what's involved in, in setting it up. So uh, we put this in 3x and remove this 2008 to just just remove those four characters, four characters. Yeah. Call it good. Yeah. And if someone wants to do it, I mean, it's not a horrible idea. If someone to yeah. do a no, testing. Right. Send permission ex to declare deny permissions. Right. Yes. If we don't already have a feature open to do this, that seems like a reasonable thing for it to do. I don't. There's I don't lots, lots of things about inheritance and stuff. I don't know that we have one for. Yeah. Deny. That's why I'm. I don't. I don't remember anything about. You know, yeah. Explicit deny. Honestly, I, I think we just toss all this and call SDDL good, and which of course is what MSI does, but only I think at MSI five. Anyway, it's probably right. calling this thing obsolete and replacing it with SDDL, but we'll see. That'd be interesting. Yes, XSD Gen support. I don't think it does anymore. Or wait, XSD Gen is the one that generates strong name classes. Uh, from the XSD. Uh, it is? Yeah, that, isn't this the one oh, that... Oh, that's the code dump. Yeah, code dump. Sorry. Um, uh, we're not going to do support in Visual Studio. and uh, I don't even know what that means. Well, if you're building an extension, the ability to call it through that and all those kinds of things might be nice. Instead of doing what we do, which is you know go in and manually hack the project file to make it work. Oh. Um... It would make it easier to create an extension that has code DOM stuff in it, but I, I don't. We don't. We'd have to create a whole project for that. I mean, well, I, I don't know how much. I guess I'm. Isn't this? Sorry, I, I'm. The build system has changed many times. Uh, last I checked, this was we had XSD Gen in the targets. Our targets. We don't ship them. Okay, this is just the Wix build targets. Yes. Okay. What well, we need an extension build targets and ship them. Right, right, right. This is part of that feature. Um, so I we have another bug about that, don't we? Yeah, for sure. Um, this uh, is a small part of that. Yeah, what did we do with the other bug? I'm sure we tossed it in 3x instead of someone do the work to create extension build stuff. We could do that. Yeah. Um, yes, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, where I fall on that is, yes, we should absolutely be able to expose you know, the, the stuff that we have, our targets and such, for others to build extensions. Um, I'm also okay with the fact that, you know, you can do all this with post-build and, you know, there, ex there are existing mechanisms for doing this. Um, but I would be fine if, if we could easily integrate this into the SDK. Right. That's basically what it comes all down to. Yeah. Um, and yes, we have an open V3X bug um, that is kind of the uh, umbrella of extension tools. Well, we can put that there, put it near it, whatever. Okay. Well, I'm, I want to, on 1667, let's just duplicate that against okay. bigger bug. 
Ability to suppress specific instance of a warning. Uh-huh. Yep. Wow. Yeah, okay. Could be interesting. Number of different ways to implement that. Could do that in 3x. 64 bit heat needed. I believe that is true. Is it? Yes, because if you want to harvest 64 bit DLLs, the x86 heat can't do it. Okay. But yeah, could be done. Call Wix cop from Votive. I suppose. I suppose you could do that. Um, yeah. This goes along with the request to have Wix cop targets. Yeah, actually, if you set it up, that's. Not the nickel. Yeah, I don't know. You might have to do more. Well, yeah, depends on how you want to run it and stuff like that. That's yes, right. And John, who's joined us today, is playing around making that happen. The patch yes. validation should check that the MSI file application column does not contain, does not change in a patch transform. Okay. I believe that. We probably should check that. Okay. I mean, yeah, it, it makes sense. Yeah. Firewall exception support for file and printer sharing. Yeah, there's, uh, again, uh, Vista and later, they added services explicitly. Cool. So, yeah, I think that's yeah, a cool be feature. Kind of, totally handy. That. Last element, additional attributes. How many of these do we have out there? Uh -huh. All right, here's toolbox again. I don't know if there's anything new in here. Do you want to do this against the other one or whichever way we want to go with that? Programmable, insertable. We have a couple of these, but we don't have toolbox. We don't have MISC status. So, yeah. Um, yeah, let me... Let me see if I can find the other one and pick whichever one is more useful. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. IL validation improvements. IL validation. It seems to be able to generate message that. Uh, my method wasn't marked static. I fix it's okay. Be useful. Did additional validation. Oh, he wants a better error message from make SFXCA. I think that's fair. Yep. Might change the title of that one to say better error messages, but whatever. I want to look at this CAS poll bug. This is going to be awesome. No, we're not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> but only because I don't really care about NetFX 1.1. Does anybody? 1.0? Does this even exist still in 2.0? Uh, I don't I don't, remember, so. I don't remember when it disappeared, but yeah, yeah, okay. No, this is gone. Anyway, man, talk about blast from the past. Five years ago, web application extension for IS7. I think we have this now because we have IS7 support. Yes, yay. This is back before we had 7. Okay. Create an extension for automatic harvesting of com info. You must heat. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, you don't oh. do this. You don't do no. this in a compiler. Because <laughs> the compiler doesn't reach out and touch the files. Right. Although, you could do it in oh, a compiler yeah. extension and a binder extension. But, yeah, yeah, no, this is what he was for. Yeah. File exists preprocessor extension. What? Depending on, no, no, don't do this. Oh, this is all kinds of scary. <laughs> no, and if you want conditions and stuff, put it in MS build. Well, of course, this is five years ago, so you didn't have MS build. No, no. 
don't do that. No. <laughs> Decompiler API to suppress dropping certain library rows. Certain library rows? Yes, I remember this one. Oh. OK. Oh, I should really remember it, shouldn't yeah, I? Yeah, you should. You opened it, it looks like. Yes, I did. Uh, um, yeah, so this is the same problem we have um, in, in general with uh, extensions and the decompiler. The, yeah, right now the decompiler by default tries to make it so that you can reuse. Yes, I your, remember your, this. You reuse your your extension authoring by That's omitting right. it from what gets decompiled. That's right. Uh, the the Wix lib that comes from the from the extension. Yeah. The problem is it basically is an all or nothing thing. Um. Uh, you know, I mean, we, I don't. Know. We could put I, it I in four. It's a breaking change, but we could put it in four. Yeah, maybe that's the way to go. I, I, I don't know that it's really. I, I don't consider it a high priority, obviously, because I've let it sit there for five years. Um, it's not wrong. I, I actually saw this problem and had some fits with it the way it was done before. So, okay, I appreciate some of the pain that's in there. Yeah. Recently, because I try to keep it working. As it is, not as this would have it. So yeah, I, I, it's fair. I don't know how to design okay. it, but yeah, but it has to go four because it would break three in a big way. Yep, agreed. All right. Relative path references for binary files. Whereas V3 does something like that, I don't understand. Um, dark? Oh, decompiler. Um, I started to write some, to decompile MSI, reassemble it later. Oh my gosh. Uh, I don't care. What do you want to do? It's a dark change between two and three. Probably uh, um, the use case is horrible. Decompiling as part of your yeah. build is just no, don't do that. Um, they need different configuration files. That. They need different configuration files. You should build differently than you're doing. Darking and it's just not right. Um, I expect we probably change this to fix a bug where things were not laid out correctly, but interesting. Um, or not being found if you or so. I don't know. I I'm ambivalent. I guess you could change it to a bind path. That's probably the most useful thing, right? That would probably be the most useful thing. The decompile with a bind path in there. Then you could change it wherever you wanted. Uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, I agree with John. I would never do this, so it makes it really difficult for me to get all excited about making it. Suspend change. it, and we'll see if anybody cares. Yeah, I think we. I, also, I think we have to suspend it. If only because, well, I suppose the scenario is wrong. The scenario is wrong. I, we'd also have to, you know, it's a breaking change now. So, I, I, and I don't care. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Carry on, carry on. Add support for the store services certificate store. Okay. Uh, sure, that could be added. Okay. Process loc then Wix variables. I don't know what we do right now. I'm not Because sure. this has changed, <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, also true. And would have to be changed. Would have to be a breaking change if we decided to do it. Our process 
that you choose only process load variables or not. Done in two passes. Yes. You do two more things. Process all local variables first and substitute them, then do the Wix variables. <laughs> they want to do loc and then Wix variables. Well, this is, remember how you know, we use Wix variables in various spots, you know, like for as placeholders for bitmaps and things like that. If you did loc first, you could localize all of those things per output. Why does it matter? Apparently, it wants to use localizable bitmaps. Oh, I see. If you have a Wix variable that has a loc variable in it. Yeah. That's strange. Well, if you want to localize a bitmap, that if you want to sorry, if you want to localize a bitmap in the you know, in Wix UI, one of the Wix UI bitmaps. So mostly, I would suggest you not do that. <clears throat> um, but I can see there, like, I got see it for EULA's. I think EULA's probably a better use case because that you have to localize. Don't we just need to keep doing it until all the variables are resolved anyway, though? I'm trying to figure out why does it matter the order? Because imagine a loc variable that contains a Wix variable that contains a loc variable. Yeah, right. Um, Shouldn't it just be a loop until it finishes resolving variables? That should work. Um, I'm a little surprised if that's not what we're doing right now. I'm missing something here. Or that's not what we're doing right now. Honestly, bind path would be a better way to solve this problem anyway. That's fair. No, it's, I mean, you're right. If I, I really like that because it, yeah, opens up even weirder, even weirder combinations. Um, I just don't know that that, that is what we're doing today. Yeah, his thing is too narrow. I see. He wants the loc to be done first so that the Wix variable has the right value in it, and then have the variables done second so that the value that got replaced by loc. Yeah, this should be a bind path anyway. Be a bind path. Where does that fall in the order of evaluation? At the latest possible moment. It only oh, gets nice. resolved when it needs the file itself. Right. So 
there's no variables involved at that point. Um, although I'm just a little surprised that we don't resolve it. Basically, it comes down to we're not resolving this enough times. Because the order shouldn't matter. Yeah, I agree. And it says the error is it's looking for bang loc. So, yeah, I would... I would definitely expect the. Uh, uh, I would expect that to to be resolved. Right. So how about we not do this bug? So I don't, this is we, this passes thing is definitely not right. The order should just can't it can't matter. I don't think. Okay. Because because we'll get somebody that wants it the other way around. Yeah, sure. Right, because you'll be like, oh, I wanted my, my loc variables have a Wix variable in it, and my Wix variables aren't getting resolved. I'm getting, you know, bang Wix variable right, in my right. my property string. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's because we fixed this other bug. I'm like, well, that was dumb. So <laughs> the order can't matter here. His solution is bind path. That's a much better way of solving this problem in general. Um, yeah. If we're trying to get file paths, that's a much better way of doing it. Um <laughs> And then we should make sure that we do resolve all of the variables fully. So I guess that's it's like a task. It's like a, a bug or something to go make sure and fix it in four if not. Because I don't think we can change it in three without upsetting people. Yeah, I agree. Yep, I agree. So this bug is no. We could open another bug to verify that we do. I hate opening books to verify code, but I don't know any other way to do it. Let's do that or we leave this one open. So. No, I don't want to leave this open, otherwise we're going to get confused by it again. And it's wrong, and so it's so deeply wrong. It's I don't want it I don't want it to color the thing that someone looks at this other bug and says, oh, that's what I should be doing. Right, right. Because this is not the right solution. It, it would just be easy for someone to write this bug the other way. Yeah. So no, this bug's wrong. We can go look at resolving deeply nested things. Yeah. Basically, we can decide to make these the same. It's one of the things in 4x to look at anyway. I think that's just the bug is to reevaluate this in 4x of the how are Wix localization variables and Wix variables really different? Okay. Clearly, one of them gets defined in a Wixel file, which has its value that you can send it off to localizers. The other one gets defined as a Wix variable inside the source code, um, which has its values as different things. But both of them are overwritable, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So um, are they really the same concept underneath? They just come from different sources. And if they're the same concept, then that means they should be resolved all at the same time. Right. And then you just have to make sure you don't get up in some weird infinite loop. <laughs> but, you know, where a loc variable has a Wix variable, and a Wix variable has a loc variable, and you just end up <laughs> blowing everything up. But we already have checks for that kind of stuff in place, so it's a matter of keeping those. All right, I think that's the fix, or the that's what comes out of this. Okay, uh, I open the bug. Sweet. All right, um, refreshing. Ensure nested, oh yeah, that one. That's uh, right. 4X, should we just triage it and open it? Sure. I mean, cause, yeah. Yeah, all right, we're skipping these four, four. So we're down to this one again. Oh, I didn't look, did you look at how many we had when we started? Snap. Got to get in the habit writing them down. John, did you write it down? No, John didn't even guess. We're... Well, I figure we're on a skeleton crew. We're not guessing. but Plus, we have a short day, and that's just going to be weird. So. When using heat, exclude file names. Don't we have another thing about excluding? Uh, I don't know. All heat feature requests kind of run together in my mind. Yeah, okay, fine. Well, yeah, this should go with that one. And yeah, it could be done. So I really wanted to. 
All right, we're just going to go for an absolute number today. How low can we go? It's not how many we get done. It's how low can we go. Probably do that for next week, too. Call it good. All right, it appears currently there's no order control of tab flow. Yes, you have to put them in the right order. Yes. The flow control is that, that, and that, and that. Oh, I'm like, what, what, what is he saying about the, oh, he's just saying that they're different, which is completely fair. It's not the same as UI sample. Yeah, so? No, see, I really dislike this last part. If some controls have this, while well, others do not, those explicitly divine come first, and those controls that have no order come last. I really don't like mixing and matching order mechanisms. Right, right. Yep, I agree with that. And I don't know that we want to go through and force everybody to put numbers on their tab controls. That's just annoying. I don't know. We haven't had many complaints about this over the years, you know? Right, right. This is not something that people seem to complain about. Just put them in the right order and call it good. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I guess I'm looking for the. Yeah, what's the what's the problem again? It would eliminate. Have to toy with their code to produce the desired output. No, you just code. you have to toy with it differently. Uh, yes, yeah, you still have to put tab orders on everything. Right. And I think it'd be really confusing if you didn't put tab orders on some things. What they would get the tab orders at the end, or something. Oh man, well, I don't know. Yeah. That that's just basically forces you to put tab orders on everything except the things you don't care, and then they're last. Yeah, I I I mean I, I I'm mildly sympathetic because I've done a lot of UI stuff, and and it's. Sometimes if some it feels a little weird, um, yeah, you know, because you do tend to mix and match um, tabable and non-tabable controls. But that works just fine. Yeah, sorry. My my point is it's it's not always intuitive what the tab order is going to be because you can mix and match tabable and non-tabable. I mean, obviously, the, you know, it, it's, it's basically it's just one more thing to look through as, as you're looking at the, at the authoring. It's, it's hard to intuit what the, what the behavior is going to be. And tab uh, order would help? I'm not saying that. Okay, because, um, I mean, it's going to do the same thing. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, the tab order would help in that it would be explicit. Um, but otherwise, no, it's not because, you know, you could get tab order out of physical order, and that would not help. Yeah, and then you'd skip um, control or... Yeah, you know. yeah. Well, that that's that's messed up. I think you can't do that. If a control is tabable, it either has a tab order or, you know, all or nothing. Like John said, all or nothing. Um, I, I'm. I would say suspend this one because it's not come up. I'm fine with that. Interesting, but meh. Better intuitively I named attributes. MS description refers to these as minimize, visible, enabled, hidden, Wix. The names are the opposite: hidden. Disabled, no minimize. Yes, they're the opposite so that the default is no, such that if they're gone, you don't have to do them. You don't have to specify them. Well, yeah, like visible is a much better thing to default two than hidden. Yeah, well, the Wix names are hidden. Right, that's what I'm saying. It's, 
it's better that hidden be something you have to specify, you have to turn right. on, than. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, hidden is something you have to say yes to, not no. Right. Right. Yes. Although these do have the double negative problems with them. Yes. Right. Hidden equals no. What? Yeah. In that case, remove it, and your life is better. That's yeah. the way they're designed. Um, well, you, you guys have more experience with much more UI than I have. I, I know why it was done. I don't know how bad it is. I guess, honestly, I would just remove it. If I saw hidden equals no, I'd remove it because it's just confusing. It's just that when you say hidden equals yes, you're like, oh, look, it's hidden. Um, yes. Well, I mean, there are some times when you have to specify hidden. Um, like in a you know control event. Well, that, you have to say hidden equals yes. Right? Yeah, so, but you also need, might need to turn them back on. So if you have a control condition. Oh, and you want to say something to be. You want to hide something? Well, you also need the opposite to, the opposite I condition see. to show it. Okay. I, I can see that. Um, but that's, that's not in the control element, so it's tangential at best. Um, I, I don't think this is a real problem. Um, the, the bits in MSDN are, you know, they're easily trackable. I certainly would not go to the point, to the extent of deprecating what we have now. I don't. Oh, don't there'd be a lot of UI change. Yeah, yeah. And then 4.0, the goal would be to get rid of all the deprecations and move to this new thing and everybody's code would change, which I guess we could do, but. Yeah. Well, if we're going to go to that that extent, I would want to revamp the you know UI authoring altogether. Uh, but I'm still not to the point where I think that it makes sense to. Yeah. Well, the goal is to say the goal is for the defaults to be correct. Which you could do even if you name them differently. What would you name minimize such that no, or what would you name visible? such that no is the default, and thus if it was absent, the right thing happened. Well, you could have, you could have, as we do elsewhere, you could have reasonable defaults regardless of what you name them. Fair enough. It's, it gets tricky to know which ones it, the defaults absolutely, are. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and we do have a minimum of those, like <laughs> vital on um, M file, which honestly we're talking about changing to non-vital anyway, but... We are? Well, we've men I've, I've mentioned, I don't know that we'll do it, but we, we mentioned it in the past. Well, that's how it started out, and then I changed it, and now you want to change it back. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Well, it, it's one of those things. It, it is a consistency thing. What do we want to be doing here? Do we want the default to be clear when you remove it, or you know, obvious when you remove it, a.k.a. always no? Right. Or that's the only thing that makes sense in my mind. If it's not here, it's not yes. That doesn't make any sense in my mind. <laughs> so it, it, if it's absent, the only logical thing is that it's false, except in the cases where it's true. Yeah. And, but it, I also agree with John. Of course, I would not want to have to specify, you know, because control has a lot of attributes on it. Oh, and, gosh. Yeah, I know. No. And it's hard to figure out what each one you know, whether it might apply to the current type of control. Well, there's that, too, but that's a different problem. Well, but it's related if you suddenly had to specify a bunch of defaults. Oh, yes. Oh, it can get worse. It's, it's insane, and people do this primarily, I think, because of IntelliSense. It's like, IntelliSense is giving me a list of all these things. I must have to give them values. And, yeah, it's, it's silly, and it's what, to be honest, it's what makes Wix authoring look so scary Does. to the uninitiated. It because if you remove all that stuff, it looks a lot better. Yeah. Component, file, source. Done. I love that. <laughs> Not just because I did it. Only mostly. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm willing. I, I don't think this is a real problem, first of all. Um, you know, yeah, you, you might have to you know, make a mental 
translation if you're looking at the MSI docs. Um, but I don't think that's a real, I don't think that's a problem serious enough to change, you know, how things are built. Um, I, I agree that the, it makes sense to have um, defaults be reasonable. So we're not taking this bug. And we leave open the uh, discussion about the defaults in the future. Does that sound right? Um, yeah. Okay. So we're not taking this bug, and we'll talk about it more in the future. Well, we will continue to discuss discussion as more things pop up. All right. Do you want to leave, you want to leave this bug open? No. No, okay. Not if we're not taking those. And I think we'll we'll hit them again. What is this? I'm just curious. Create fragments to allow WISC components to be redistributed. Oh, the WISC tool set itself? Hmm. I don't know that. Anyway, uh, I don't think we want to maintain that. Anyway, so I think we're going to stop there, given that it's about my stopping time. If I hit refresh, and we go one, two, three. Three, one, two, three. That gets us down to 156. So not under 150, but that's okay. Not bad for a short day. Um, probably was like we got at least 20, right? I think so. Yeah. All right. Well, someone will be able to go back in the video and go, "What are you talking about?" Of course, it was 170 when they started. When did they right. start? Anyway, or whatever it was. Um, and or maybe 180. I don't know. Whatever it was. So this is good. We're making progress. So we'll do this again on Tuesday. Uh, and given that it's Thursday now, I assume it's Thursday now. I yes. think so. Yay. All right. This holiday thing has totally thrown me off of what day it is. Yes, so on the 31st, last day of the year, we'll do this again, and then we'll get back to our regularly scheduled status meetings and all that kind of good stuff on the 2nd in the new year, which sounds good to me. So this is the end of 12.9.1, uh, <laughs> and we'll slip a 12.9.2 meeting in next week. And... Uh, then we'll, we'll call 2013 good. Works for me. All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen, John Cooper, Bob Arnson, for joining me on this day after Christmas. I hope you guys had a wonderful time off. And to the rest of you that are watching this in the future, hope you had a wonderful holidays as well. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers.